In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about energy transfer and transformation. So when we transfer, this is when we pass energy unchanged, and a transformation is when the energy changes form. When we are thinking about collisions, we have two main kinds of energy. We have our kinetic energy, and this is the energy of motion. And while there is absolutely microscopic motion that's happening all the time in all matter, for the purposes of our collisions unit, we're thinking about kinetic energy as the energy of the total object. So is the object itself in motion or is the object itself at rest? And the other big kind of energy that we have is our potential energy. And potential energy means like our possible energy or even stored energy, energy that can be used. And it turns out that when we're thinking about the motion of objects, we often have kinetic energy and potential energy transforming all the time. So they're just constantly transforming from kinetic to potential, back to kinetic, and so on. So this is almost like a cycle. And largely, it just depends on where the object is located. Now, when we're thinking about potential energy, energy potential basically can come from a variety of things, but in the case of the skateboarder, it comes from um, position. And then when we're thinking about collisions, it can come from a contact. So a position of an object, for example, a skateboarder that is up high on a ramp, we know that once this skateboarder is released, we know that the skateboarder is gonna move. So similarly with my pen, if I raise my pen up, I can drop it and I know that it's gonna fall. So the higher up I, I raise my pencil or my pen, the more potential energy it has because I know that once released, it will have motion. Also in contact, because we know that when two objects collide at the moment of contact, there is no motion. That would mean then that at the moment of contact, it's all potential energy. So if we look at this skate park analogy, when the skateboarder is starting, if we have say, oh gosh, let's say, uh, let's say we have 10 units of energy. Now, energy, remember, is not matter. However, sometimes it can be helpful to think about it um, as a numerical value. Okay, so I have these 10 units of energy. If we know that energy is constantly transforming between kinetic and potential, at this moment, before the skateboarder is moving, all of the energy is potential. So I'll do kinetic as red, and I'll do potential as blue. Okay, so at this moment in time, all of the energy is potential. And if we do it like the graph um, that they have on the FET simulation, we'll say that this brown box represents the total energy. Okay, so at that moment, there's no kinetic energy, it's all potential. But the moment that this um, skateboarder begins to roll down the ramp, it's a different story. So we still have, let's say the skateboarder is here. We still have the same amount of total energy. And this is that idea of conservation of energy. This is not going to change. This total value will always be 10 units. But now the skateboarder is lower, so there's less potential energy, and the skateboarder is moving. Oops. So we now have kinetic energy, and I wouldn't wanna go that high, right? Um, as the skateboarder gets closer and closer to the bottom of this ramp, they're going faster and faster. We know that speed, as speed increases, Kinetic energy also increases. 
So this guy's going faster, 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 faster. And down here at the bottom now, if again, we have our same total energy, that never changes. But now, first of all, he's really close to the bottom, so there's not much potential energy left. And then this one would go up to about here. Um, but also, he's going faster, so he's gonna have more kinetic energy. Here, the speed is zero. Here he's going faster and here he's going even faster and we're seeing an increasing amount of the kinetic energy. Again, these are moments in time. At the very bottom of the ramp, our skateboarder is, um, has no potential energy. Because he's at the bottom and all of it has been converted or transformed into kinetic energy. Going back up, the process reverses. And again, that's why there's just this constant cycle. Now, in reality, eventually this skateboarder is gonna stop. And the skateboarder is gonna stop because the amount of energy stays the same. However, there are now forces that we know of that are resisting the motion. And so therefore, um, some of the energy goes into this sort of resistance, if you will, and that ends up becoming, uh, this resistant force is the force of friction. And friction, remember, just opposes motion. There would also be drag as they come down. But anyway, friction is opposing motion. And um, when friction is in place, there is, um, the energy decreases because eventually it stops. But remember, our total energy has to stay the same. So the energy has to go somewhere. So it transforms into another kind of energy, which um, we think of as thermal energy or colloquially what we call heat. Okay, so if we were to color this in, say orange, this is showing what happens when there's no friction. But of course that doesn't ever happen. And so, uh, over here, you see that with friction, um, the longer this goes, the more that the thermal energy grows. And eventually, when the person stops at the very bottom, uh, they would have their total energy, there would be no kinetic energy, there would be no potential energy, and it would have all converted into thermal energy.